Countdown's worst persons in the world, the bronze to Corinne Steindler of page six from Rupert Murdoch's rag, the New York Post. Let's just enjoy the photo for a second. The latest fictional story Ms. Steindler has been forced to make up for tomorrow's paper that I quote, threw a fit over my train trip to Washington last week for Tim Russert's memorial and that I was quote, yelling at the Kennedy Center about them not having ketchup for my lunch. Two small problems, Ms. Steindler. I didn't take the train to Washington last week. I went in a car, both ways, to and fro. And I didn't eat at the Kennedy Center, lunch or anything else. I ate at a restaurant at Union Station. Well, I take that back. I had a Starbucks at the Kennedy Center, but I usually don't put ketchup in my Starbucks. You guys, you're kind of embarrassing yourselves now. The runner-up tonight, Bill O. Now Newsweek is on the list. The two biggest media enemies Fox News has right now are NBC News and Newsweek magazine, and the two are tied in together. As you know, both are committed left-wing organizations, and that means they've been supplying its far-left columnists to NBC to attack anyone who doesn't see it their way. Bellow then resorted to his favorite weapon, statistics that he thinks prove whatever his case might happen to be, but which are actually so phony, they must have come to him in a dream. The irony here is that business is bad at both NBC and Newsweek. They're failing. MSNBC will only get 13% of the cable news revenue this year. Fox will get about 49% and is far down in the rankings. In fact, Neil Cavuto at 4 p.m. beats anything MSNBC has in primetime and viewers watching live. Way to go, Neil. You're far down in the rankings, you say? Amen, brother. As to the Neil Cavuto stuff, sadly, no. Monday's edition of Cavuto drew an audience of 179,000 in the advertising demographic. Countdown had 454,000. In fact, Hardball, Verdict, The Countdown Replay, and Lock Up San Quentin all had higher ratings than Cavuto. But I digress. What made Bill decide that Newsweek had gone all pinko? Because last week it had made fun of the title of Billow's next book, A Bold, Fresh Piece of Humanity. That means the magazine has really gone off the rails with its far-left posture. Well, check this out. Online right now, Newsweek.com is asking for your opinion. Which is a better title for Billow's Tome? A, a big steaming lump of male vanity. B, a deep barking voice of inanity. Or C, a large bag of gas who's not Hannity. Please vote at Newsweek.com. And I'd like to deny completely that MSNBC and Newsweek are all tied in together in the hunt for Bill O'Reilly. And our winner, Bill O'Reilly. Many times he has crossed the line from puerile to indefensible, but last night he insulted a man whose boots he was not worthy to lick. Insulted him the day after he died. Insulted him for doing what he, O'Reilly, does constantly. I love to read Bill's words, as you know, but I can't do this crap justice. Now, George Carlin also dealt with a number of controversial issues. A 71-year-old comedian died from heart failure over the weekend. I spoke with him several years ago. When I see a guy like you, and I say, well, why does he need to use the F word when he can punch the line, get the laugh without the F word? Why do you need to use it? It's not a need. I, it's a choice. These, well, why do you choose to use it? Well, because it's a, it's a form of spice in my stew. Seriously. Seriously, O'Reilly, seriously, the man's dead 24 hours and you decide to replay the day you condescendingly tried to criticize him for using the F word? We will leave you with a... I, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! <laughs> do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! <laughs> thing sucks! Seriously, Bill. Greasy hypocrite. Bill O, today's worst person in the world! <laughs>